In this example, an investor buys protection on a 10-year CDS for a high yield issuer with a notional of $20 million. The CDS spread is 460 basis points or 4.6% and the effective spread duration of the CDS is 7.8. The fixed coupon on high yield CDS contracts is 5%. Calculate the CDS price. Okay, so we'll use the formula, which is uh, 1 plus the fixed coupon minus the CDS spread, and the difference will be multiplied by the effective spread duration of the CDS. So we'll substitute the numbers in. Okay, the fixed coupon is 5%, the CDS spread is 4.6%, and the effective spread duration of the CDS is 7.8. So we'll calculate the number. This will be 1.0312 per 1 unit notional. So be careful when you do the calculation, uh, you'll take 1 plus bracket, 5%, 0 0.05 minus 0 0.046, close bracket, times 7.8. Alright, so I'll get 1.0312, this is per 1 unit notional. And since the notional of the contract is $20 million, we multiply by $20 million, and we'll get $20,624,000. So that would be the CDS price per 1 unit notional and also based on the notional given by the question. Now let's move on to the next part. Given the same contract, the same investor, calculate the gain or loss on the CDS contract if the CDS spread immediately increases to 490 basis points. So we'll observe that the spread increases by 30 basis points. So what we need to do now is uh, we will recalculate the CDS price using the, the new CDS spread, which is 4.9%. So if I take a one plus bracket, 0 0.05 minus 0 0.049 close bracket times 7.8 all right and then uh, for the whole thing we'll multiply by 20 million dollars and the cds price would have dropped to 20 million 156 thousand dollars now when the cds price drops uh, then it is a gain for the short position okay when the price drops is a gain for the short position and is a loss for the long position and for this case, uh, the party that buys a CDS or the party that buys protection is the party that is taking the short position on the reference entity, okay, or the underlying in this case. Okay, so keep that in mind. So this will be a gain for the investor. So when we calculate the gain, we will take the difference in price. So I will take the new price, which is $20,156,000. I will minus the initial price. And because it's a short position, I will insert a negative sign at the front. Okay, and uh, in front here, I'll the, the observe uh, this negative sign. Okay, so the difference is negative. So a negative multiplied by a negative becomes a positive. Okay, so the CDS buyer would have a mark-to-market gain of uh, $468,000. Alternatively, we can also use this formula, okay, where we'll take the CDS notional, multiply by negative effective spread duration of the CDS times the change in the CDS spread. Now, if I want to jump straight to calculating the gain or loss for the CDS buyer, then what we'll do is for the CDS notional, I will replace it with $20 million. But because the investor is buying protection, so the investor is taking a short position, so I will insert it as negative $20 million, okay, for the short position. And for the rest, we'll just substitute value in. And uh, for the spread duration, there'll be 7.8. And the change in CDS spread will be uh, a positive 0.3%. Okay, and a negative times a negative here would give us a positive and you'll get $468,000. Okay, so just to do a quick check, this is uh, 20 million, right? And then we multiply by 7.8 and multiply by 0 0.3 divided by 100. So that will be $468,000. Okay, so that's the uh, gain for the CDS buyer. Now, this can only be used uh, if it is an immediate change uh, in the CDS spread. Now, what if the spread dropped? to 440 basis points. So we will use the same approach. We'll calculate the price. We'll, we'll substitute the CDS spread of 4.4%. And upon calculation, we'll find that the price has actually gone up. So if the CDS price goes up, it's a gain for the long position. Okay, but the investor in this case is buying the protection. So the investor is in a short position and therefore the short position loses. Okay, so there will be a mark to market loss for the CDS buyer. If you take the difference in the price, okay, and then we multiply by a negative sign because the buyer is in a short position, we will get negative 312,000. So in other words, for the CDS buyer or the investor, they have a mark to market loss. Now, again, we can use the alternative method and we'll substitute negative 20 million for the short position. 
Okay, and the change in CDS spread will be 4.4% minus 4.6%. So there will be a decline in the CDS spread. Okay, and uh, if you have three negatives here, if you multiply all the together, you will get negative $312,000. Right, so it's exactly the same number or same result as what we obtained earlier. Moving on. Now, let's say uh, we move, uh, we fast forward to one year later. Okay, and uh, we, we will need to calculate the total return on the CDS contract one year later, assuming the CDS spread increases by 20%. So observe how I express the change as a proportionate increase. And the CDS spread duration declines to 6.5, okay, after one year. So we'll still have the initial price uh, that we calculated at time zero. And then what we'll do now is we'll calculate the CDS price one year later. Okay, so the CDS spread would be... So given this, that the CDS spread has increased by 20%, so you will take 460 basis points and you multiply by 1 plus 20%, 0 0.2, so there will be 552 basis points. Okay, we will substitute this number in, 5.52%, and the effective spread duration uh, is 6.5, okay, and we'll get $19,324,000. So the price has dropped over that one year. So when the price drops, it's a gain for the short position, which is the investor in this case. Okay, and uh, the mark to market gain for the CDS buyer, okay, would be the difference in the price, okay, with a negative sign in front for the short position. So that would be a uh, gain. Overall, it would be a mark to market gain for the CDS buyer of $1.3 million. Okay, and because they're asking for the total return, you need to consider the coupon as well on the CDS. Okay, and the CDS coupon would be 5%, okay, fixed coupon times the notional $20 million, that would be $1 million. Uh, so bear in mind that uh, for the party that buys a protection, they would have to pay the premium okay, on the CDS. So this coupon would be the premium that they would pay. So the overall return would be the gain of $1.3 million minus the premium paid. So the overall return for the CDS buyer would be a $300,000 return. Okay, So that overall is positive $300,000. Now let's move on to what if it's a CDS seller. Okay, so of course, if you're doing it for a CDS seller, you could have just changed the sign uh, or multiply a negative sign to the results that you obtain from the CDS buyer. You will still get the same uh, outcome. But let's say if you do it from scratch, okay, assuming that we did not have the information uh, that we did with the CDS buyer, okay, we do it from scratch. So let's say, uh, given the same initial CDS price, okay, we want to calculate the gain or loss on the CDS contract. Okay, if the CDS spread immediately increases to 490 basis points, and in this case now the investor is the party that sells protection. Okay, so they are the long position. Okay, they have a long position in the reference entity or the underlying. Now, uh, we have the values from earlier. So the CDS price uh, initially will be 20.624 million, but when the CDS price uh, CDS spread increases to 4.9%, the CDS price dropped to 20,156,000. So this is a loss for the long position. So what you do now is because the investor is the protection seller, you will calculate the difference in price, but the sign that you use here is positive, not negative. Okay, we use a positive sign for the long position. So you will get negative $468,000. Okay, that will be a loss for the CDS seller. Okay, and of course, if you want to use this formula, uh, be careful because now the investor is the seller of protection, so they are in a long position. So the CDS notional has to be positive. All right, and you calculate the outcome as negative 468,000. That will be a loss for the CDS seller. Okay, now let's say if the spread declines to 440 basis points, then uh, in the same way, we'll calculate the CDS price. Uh, it increases to $20,936,000. So if the CDS price increases, this is a gain for the long position okay and the protection seller would gain in this case okay again you take the difference in price and the sign in front is positive so you will get a gain of three hundred and twelve thousand dollars for the protection seller okay so it's basically the outcome is the it's just that you just have to multiply a negative sign to what you obtain from the cds buyer that, that would be another way to to do it Right, now I can use the uh, alternative method. Okay, I can substitute a positive $20 million as the notional. Again, it's positive because the investor is selling protection. That's a long position. Okay, and then you will calculate uh, the, you multiply all these three numbers. So you will get a positive outcome. So that's a gain of $312,000 for the 
for the CDS seller. So when the CDS spread declines, okay, is the CDS seller would gain. Now, let's fast forward to one year later. Okay, the investor is selling protection. Okay, on the on the CDS. So one year later, the CDS spread uh, spread increases by twenty percent, and the CDS spread duration declines to six point five. So we have already done the calculation earlier. Okay, the spread would increase to five hundred and fifty two basis point or five point five two percent. The CDS price would be nineteen million three hundred twenty four thousand dollars. Okay, and coming from the seller perspective, the mark to market gain for the CDS seller would be the difference in price. Okay, you will take nineteen million three hundred twenty four thousand dollars minus twenty million six hundred twenty four thousand dollars. Okay, and the sign is positive for the for the long position. Okay, and you will get a loss of one point three million. And the coupon on the CDS or the premium on the CDS would be one million. And for the CDS seller, they would receive the premium or the coupon. So when you calculate the total return for the CDS seller, you will take the mark to market loss of one point three million, but you would receive the coupon so you plus 1 million okay so the overall uh, return here would be negative $300,000 okay so overall is a loss for the CDS seller so in terms of the exam of course uh, you what you could do is if you find it very confusing to have uh, to, to look at both sides what you can do is you can anchor to one side you can just uh, just know how to do the calculation from the CDS buyer perspective okay so when it comes to CDS seller you just have to multiply a negative sign to your outcome so that that would be another a more systematic way okay or a more efficient way to do questions okay especially if you there are so many things to remember for the exam